All right, guys, welcome to the show. I have uh, some wild videos that I'm going to show you here. So we have Democrats, or excuse me, Republicans who totally and completely misdiagnosed why they keep losing in elections, and uh, they're determined to keep going even faster in the wrong direction. So that's amazing. We'll talk about that. We also have um, Trump. We have proof now that Trump apparently believed the fantasy that he would be reinstated as president before 2024. So in other words, he was brainwashed even by the likes of Mike Lindell, Sidney Powell, like the craziest people you can imagine. This is the guy Trump actually believed. Then we'll get into the devastating news for Joe Biden. Um, Muslim voters turning on him, Arab Americans turning on him, uh, Latinos turning on him. And we have some devastating segments to share with you on that front. And then later on in the show, we'll get to this new uh, ethics reform package that the Supreme Court said we're voluntarily doing. And we'll talk about why it's nothing but a giant colossal, pathetic joke. All right, so without further ado, we'll dive into it here. Everybody, please do me a big favor. Please click subscribe. Helps me big time in the algorithm, and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, <clears throat> and we're trying to continue to grow the community as much as possible, so I deeply, deeply appreciate it. If there's one thing you do with this video, please click sub. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it here. So Representative Bob Good um, was at some Heritage Foundation event. Heritage Foundation is, of course, a, a giant right-wing think tank. And um, he comes out and gives his diagnosis why Republicans keep losing. So remember, when we had the midterm elections, we were told 15 ways to Sunday that it was going to be a red wave. And I came out and said, you know what? Hold your horses. I'm agnostic on that because over 50 percent of the Republicans running are election deniers. Also, the Supreme Court just overturned Roe versus Wade. Trump is still an albatross around the necks of these Republicans. So I'm not sure it's going to be a red wave. Turns out I was right. It was a red trickle. But then we've had special elections since then. And in those special elections, Democrats have overperformed or outperformed the polls by 10 points against Republicans. And so now we just had the direct vote in Ohio on weed and abortion. Guess what? Those two things won, even though Ohio is now a kind of solidly red state at like R plus eight or R plus six. Uh, you also have in Kentucky, Democratic incumbent governor Andy Bashir crushed Cameron, the Republican challenger you have in Virginia, the two state houses. They went Democratic. And what, of course, they were trying to do there is get the governor, Glenn Youngkin, to have Republican control of both of those houses so they can get their right wing agenda through. It all came uh, falling apart. It all fell down and fell apart. And it was abysmal for them. Well, now they're diagnosing the problem exactly wrong. Here we go. Let's listen to what he has to say. We just came off of an election in Virginia. And the narrative now is, oh, abortion's a loser. We got to surrender on abortion. We got to give in on abortion. We got to be like the Democrats on abortion. Then maybe we can win elections. I would argue, what's the point of winning elections if you're not going to fight for life? But, but beyond that, what was Virginia's position? What was the state of Virginia's political leader's position on abortion? We're okay with 94% of abortions because we want a 15-week ban. And the Democrats, the other side, wants 100% of abortions. So we're going to rally in the, the, the red areas and the, the, the conservatives and the red base uh, to fight for 6% of abortions. And I submit that's the reason why we had low red turnout in Virginia. For those who are reading into that, this was all about one particular issue, that people didn't vote on inflation and grocery prices and gas prices and crime and the border and education, everything else that we're winning on, we lost only because everybody who voted in Virginia was voting on whether or not they could have abortions up to the moment of abortion and have, uh, you have to pay for it with your tax dollars. So in other words, the problem is we were too liberal on the issue of abortion. When we said 15-week ban, that's crazy. Maybe we should do a 10-week ban. Maybe we should do a six-week ban. Maybe we should do a ban from the moment of conception. This problem, this idea that we're not, you know, uh, liberal enough or democratic enough on the issue of abortion, I don't buy it. This is what he's claiming. To which I say, by all means, son, proceed. Knock yourself out, fella. <laughs> it's not going to go well for you. Because, look, the fact of the matter is this. The, the Republican Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, and the American voter looked at that and said, OK, I am going to blame Republicans for that. It was Donald Trump who got us this overwhelmingly right wing Supreme Court. They're very conservative. They voted in in accordance with that when it came to Roe versus Wade and threw it out, by the way, in the decisions there. They said, hey, maybe we should reevaluate gay marriage, too. This is what Clarence Thomas came out and said. And guess what? People don't agree. So the Supreme Court was directly blame for that. And Republicans more broadly were directly blamed for that because why? In all these red states around the country, you're having more restrictive laws pass. Some states, they ban it from the moment of conception. 
Some states, they say a six-week ban. Some states, they say a 12-week ban. Some states, they don't even have exceptions for rape or incest in the law. And so with that, the voter looks at that and go, goes, oh, God, okay, so the Republicans are kind of extreme. Also, I would argue uh, Trump being the leader of the party, they go, okay, they're kind of extreme. So that's why you guys lost. But his answer is basically, well, we're not conservative enough. Look, this is the problem. With any election, you can sort of have this uh, dilemma. Because, and it, it works the same on the Democratic side, too, right? They could say, if Democrats do poorly in an election, the left is going to say, well, it's because they weren't left-wing enough. And the more centrist Democrats are going to say, no, the problem is we weren't centrist enough. So in other words, you could just like double down on what your perspective is after the election. You could have the same analysis before the election and then after the election. Just say, oh, you, you didn't go far enough in the direction I want. But now they're doing on this, this on the Republican side. But what I would say about doing it on the Republican side, it is, it is the most anti-empirical thing you could say and do. Because we've seen the polling. Obviously, Americans were very pro Roe versus Wade. It was sort of a, a game changer moment where that's where Democrats started uh, outperforming the polls colossally is when Roe versus Wade was overturned. And when you had, I would argue, the over 50 percent of Republican candidates being election deniers, like this was the moment where voters were like, OK, this is a bridge too far. If you're saying that, you know, we want to try to overturn the previous election, that's psychotic. You're coming after the peaceful transfer of power. We're against that coming after abortion. That's crazy. We're against that. As you saw in Ohio on weed. I mean, these things ended up winning by double digits, legalizing weed. All the Republicans or all except maybe a handful are against legalizing recreational marijuana. So the reason why he's wrong is when you go to the polling, we know he's wrong. People are telling you what they think on the issue and he's just hand waving it away and saying nonsense or I don't care. Or, no, actually, I think they would like it even more. So imagine if you had, instead of the Republicans calling for a 15-week ban in Virginia, imagine all of them are out there campaigning for a full ban from the moment of conception. It's his contention that Republicans would have done better if they did that. And you know what? You're seeing this trend all around the country with the Republicans, is that now when they lose, they think, you know what? We weren't pro-MAGA enough. We weren't on Trump's nutsack enough. We didn't deny the election hard enough. You know, we didn't uh, go after Democrats and call them fascists, communists, and vermin enough. Th like, this is where they've landed. And what you have here is a political party that's barely a political party anymore. You have this fringe extremist cult, which is only getting more and more extreme. And this is with all the uh, fighting internally that you see in Congress when it comes to the Republicans. It's this, the same problem is at the core of it. Nobody's pure enough. Nobody's conservative enough. Everybody's trying to out virtue signal each other. And their policy answer is to be even more wrong and even more unpopular. And then guess what? When they lose the next time, too, they'll turn around and say the same thing. They'll turn around and say, well, again, the problem was we didn't uh, we didn't pass the Zygote Protection Act. So, like I said, look, by all means, sir, proceed like if you want to do this, because what happens in the elections now, it's not that people are voting for Democrats as much as they're just voting against Republicans. It's not that people love the job Democrats are doing. It's just that they're like, okay, the other guys are so freaking insane. I can't help myself. And this guy wants to uh, continue down that path, continue with the Republican Party on that trajectory. And every Democrat in the country should be sending him a box of chocolates or some donuts or some flowers because he's the reason that these milk toast centrist Democrats basically get away with, with murder. Because they go, hey, at least this guy's not him. And that's true. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.